What is up, my brethren of the forge? Welcome to a new idea of what we're going to call the Headbanger Gamer series, where we investigate metal bands and records influenced by video game lore. Whether it be new or old, there's so much content out there in video game worlds that have overlap with the metal community. Looking at you, Doom. Before we get started, though, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you dig this kind of content. We do have a ton of other content in the vein of metal reviews, interviews, Views, reactions, top lists of the month, and our underground spotlight. Check out our channel. There's a lot of stuff on there. You can easily browse the playlist. Help us hit that 1,000 subscriber milestone. In this week's episode, I was unbelievably excited. <laughs> to shoot this because I'm going to cover some of the bands that are inspired by what's called a Soulsborne game. For those who don't know what the term Soulsborne means, it's basically something that covers the video games in the Demon Souls, which we're getting a remake of and I absolutely can't fucking contain myself. The Dark Souls 1 through 3 games, which is like medieval dark fantasy perfection in my opinion. Dark Souls 3 was my favorite of all of these. And Bloodborne, which is my favorite of all of the Soulsborne games. Cosmic Horror and Earth early Victorian Gothic landscapes, sign me up. What's your favorite of the Soulsborne series? Do you have a favorite metal record to blast while you're playing? Let us know in the comments. The Souls games, in addition to Bloodborne, are extremely punishing and rewarding games rich with lore and world building, dripping with atmosphere and offer a massive amount of inspiration for the creatives at heart. Similar to the classic heavy metal bands influenced by Tolkien, it's no surprise that metal musicians started to latch on to the worlds within the Soulsborne games. Gaming and metal have been going together since the early days of gaming, such as 1989's Holy Diver, guess where that came from, up through the recent 2020 Doom Eternal. It's so cool to me being a huge metal fan, as well as a huge Soulsborne fan, that something in these games sticks in musicians' brains that they want to explore it creatively within the metal genre. I think the biggest thing that is shared between the metal genre and the Soulsborne games is the obscured narrative of both and is not completely obvious from the start. You have to dig and unravel the stories buried within, and every person finds different meanings in records and also in these Soulsborne games. These games to me are personally about triumph and working hard to learn and be better and ultimately overcoming the struggle of failing over and over again. I know this scene all too well. On that note, let's prepare to die and get into some metal bands inspired by Dark Souls and Bloodborne lore. I want to preface that this list is going to be short as I want to do this as an ongoing series for metal releases and the Dark Souls slash Bloodborne games. So I started with three records. I have more to cover in future episodes, but let me know any bands or records that you love that are Soulsborne inspired and let's keep this discussion going. The first one I have on my list is Two Mold, Manner of Infinite Forms. This was released on June 18th, 2018 on 20 bucks spin. This album is probably the most obvious and popular out of the entire Soulsborn list of records. So I wanted to just get it out of the way now before people were like, what the fuck, Tomb Mold better be on here. When this came out, people couldn't stop talking about it. A highly creative and obscure death metal world built upon the world within Dark Souls and Bloodborne. Fun fact, Tomb Mold is actually an item that's found within the Chalice Dungeons of Bloodborne, so it's a rad band name for a death metal band. And I love when bands nail that sound of their band name, and this album sounds exactly how you would think. Disharmonious, pulverizing and really grimy. Here's a clip from one of my favorite songs and song titles inspired by Dark Souls, Abyss Walker. Inspired by the story of Knight Artorius, the Abyss Walker, this is an amazing boss fight and an amazing song. This is a great example of a band taking lore from a game and making a killer metal song out of it. Some of my favorite lyrics from this track are, the real horror is what's between living and dying. Open your eyes, the unlocked memories of past lives. 
Pretty awesome stuff. It's great lyrics reminiscent of the story of Artorias. Artorias was one of the four knights of Gwyn in Dark Souls lore, who eventually became corrupted by the Abyss. In Dark Souls, your player character goes back in time to defeat him and preserve the Lost Knight's honor. Manor of Infinite Forms is a killer record, and if you haven't heard it yet and you love death metal, get on it. Also, their follow-up, Planetary Clairvoyance, is also pretty great. <laughs> The next one on my list I have is Visigoth, The Bells of Awakening EP. This came out on May 24th, 2019 on Metal Blade Records. Visigoth are a fantastic classic heavy metal band based on fantasy themes. Their most recent full length, The Conqueror's Oath, was one of my favorite heavy metal records of 2018. But these dudes have roots in Dark Souls lore with their most recent EP, The Bells of Awakening. This EP is short, it's only two songs, but it's absolutely amazing and I wish it was longer. The name of the EP actually comes from the first Dark Souls game where the Ashen One or the Chosen Undead slash main player character is set to ring the two bells of awakening. Those who played the game remember fighting the bell gargoyles to ring the first bell, which gave me a ton of trouble to be honest, the first time because there are two bosses at the same time. The other bell is deep below and further into the game past most of the bullshit area of the game, Blight Town, and into Quelag's domain where you fight the Chaos Witch, Quelag, which in my opinion is not as hard to defeat, but, you know, I don't know teach their own. The bells serve as a big piece of the first part of Dark Souls 1 until you discover that you need to secure the Lord Vessel and succeed Lord Gwyn. Enough of this nerd shit. Here's a clip of my favorite song from the EP, Fireseeker. Some of my favorite lyrics from the song are, Ashen One, this world is dying. Embrace the sun. The time has come, your flame is rising. Ashen One, the dark is howling. Push ever on. Raise your sword, become the bane of the abyss. I was always with the Warriors of Sunlight Covenant, otherwise known as Sun Bros. These lyrics remind me of the good path you can take in the game and be a beacon of light in such a desolate and lost world. Plus, I love co-op and being a warrior of sunlight is a blast to help other people through the game. Last one on my list is Firelink, self-titled. This came out June 16th, 2020 of this year as an independent release, and last on my list, but certainly not least. These guys have surprised the shit out of me since their first album, The Inveterate Fire, back in 2019. I had high expectations and actually missed this most recent album in June when it came out, but I'm so glad I found this record because holy shit, they improved on everything that they did before even more. This is melodic, progressive black metal at some of its finest, completely inspired by Dark Souls lore. The name Firelink comes from the original rest location of Dark Souls 1, known as Firelink Shrine. This is the first destination after escaping the Northern Undead Asylum. This location is an ancient ruin slash gathering hub for many of the merchants and the story-related characters of the game. It's associated with safety and a central location for traveling around the interwoven locations. I remember this location vividly the first time I played it, many, many years ago, talking to the first NPC sitting next to the fire and being completely blown away by the atmosphere of this game. Firelink nails all aspects of the appeals Dark Souls had as a game. Mystery, fury, brief moments of clarity. Here's a clip from one of my favorite songs from their most recent record, Where Demons Bore. <laughs> Some lyrics from this song that I thought were badass were staring out into this lake of endless flame where beneath me an incomprehensible titan forms. 
A deformed body of magma leaking mass as it falls the lake descends with it, allowing me to traverse these scalding grounds. These lyrics are likely referring to one of the children of the Witch of Izalith, her only son, who was taken by the Chaos Flame and transformed into a demon. The giant creature and boss is known as Ceaseless Discharge, who remains in the demon ruins, easily one of the largest and most intimidating bosses in the game, but easily beaten with an exploit, and still a cool location and boss fight. Thanks so much for sticking with us on this gamer journey. Let us know in the comments some other Soulsborne bands that you dig. What are some other great games that have overlap with metal that you'd like to see us cover? Let us know. That's it for our Soulsborne segment of Headbangers Gamer. Stay tuned for more like this in the future. Get good and stay in the fight. Take care.